What's up guys, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and as I promised in this tutorial we are going to jump right back into it. We're not going to do much of a, um, we're not going to do much of a refresher here and uh, all I want to do is I just want to say okay so we made our connection, we have our driver, so what I want to do and I want all of you to do is I want you to run this and make sure you get nothing in the console because if you get anything that means you have a problem and if you have a problem look up the problem on Google figure out what you gotta do you might even know what the problem is because it probably tells you so make sure all of your errors are checked out and now we're gonna move on from here so the first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to make two methods that will update our database um, usually when you use batch updates you're usually using them for inserts or updates so you use them if you want to insert a whole bunch of data into the database at once or if you want to update a whole bunch of data into the database at once and what I realized is we haven't really done any SQL commands with update yet so that's why I chose to use this kind of program because it will get you guys familiar with updates and I made sure there were different data types so that we weren't just using strings like in the books to get you guys used to that too so hopefully this will be able to um, let you guys realize a whole lot of stuff so uh, give me a double enter um, under this main method and let's write a new method and this method is going to be called withdraw from checking and it's going to be used every time one of our users wants to withdraw some money from their checking account so let's say public static void withdraw from checking and let's open up that main method I mean that uh, method. And then in here, I want you to call that withdraw from checking uh, method. So just say withdraw from checking. And make sure you are doing this in your try block and right under your connection with the database, okay? So the two things that we know we are going to want to send to withdraw from checking is the connection and the statement so that we can connect to the database, make sure we have a connection within withdraw from checking, and we can write a statement within withdraw from checking. So in order to send these two variables, highlight over connection and paste it in, and give me a comma, and then highlight over statement and paste it in. And since we have to declare variables in the method declaration, come down here and paste that in, and then for statement, let's grab that, and let's also paste it in. Okay, now every time we want to deal with money in Java, we are going to want to use something called a big decimal. So I need you guys to come up here and I need you guys to do, give me an import and say import, I'm pretty sure it's in java.math and let's type in big decimal. Hopefully this works, and that would be embarrassing. Okay, it does work. So I wanna show you guys something. Every time you want to, um, what we are going to do is the next parameter we are going to send is the big decimal amount of however much they want to withdraw in their checking account. So it would be something like $100 or something like that. But we don't wanna just paste in $100 in there. We want to use a big decimal. So the way you would create a new big decimal is you would just say big, decimal withdraw amount is assigned new big decimal just like that uh, oh and then you have to put the actual amount in of how much it is so that it's sent to the constructor so this creates the object for big decimal and this creates the reference variable so if you wanted to send the withdraw amount of one hundred dollars as a big decimal here you would just paste in withdraw amount and then down here, you would say, let's say big decimal, and let's call it balance. Oh, let's call it amount. And we will see our error goes away. But as you can see, the only reason we are using this variable is just to spit it back out two seconds later. So instead of just creating this variable and then spitting it out right here, what we can do is we can highlight over this part of the code, copy this, and paste it in withdraw amount and then get rid of that whole statement. So this is a little cleaner way of just saying, okay, we know that we want to give it a big decimal and it will be $100. And it will still send here an amount of $100. So it'll work the exact same way. I just wanted to show you guys the longer way so you can understand what I typed in when I wrote it in here. So this is a big decimal of $100. 
So then the next thing that we are going to want to send is the ID of whoever this person is so that we make sure we withdraw money from the correct checking account. So since we only used put in one person, let's just say one. So then in here, let's go int ID. And that's it. So we are going to need one more method that is going to be the deposit into savings method. So we are going to be withdrawing from the checking and then we're going to be depositing within the savings. So just create, just highlight over this actually, and let's copy and paste this method. And then let's recall this deposit into saving. And then let's highlight over this and give me a double enter and then make sure we call it the same thing because if you really think about it within the deposit um, into savings method we are still going to need to have a connection with the database we are still going to need to create a statement we are still going to need to give it an amount and we are still going to need the ID of the user so the parameters that we are going to send are the same and as we said this is going to be a transferring program so what we are going to do is take out $100 from the checking and we are going to put in $100 into the savings, okay? So I want you guys to write this statement and then I'm going to explain it later. So I want you guys to just write in here statement dot add batch. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to throw an exception. And the reason we need to throw an exception is here is because this statement.addBatch is going to create a new statement. And anytime we talk to the database, we need to expect an SQL exception. So this SQL exception will be thrown back to the main method since this is the method that called it. And then it will be caught in the SQL exception in the, um, in the main method and it will be printed out. So this is a good way of not having to write another catch block within this method. So, and then when we said statement.addBatch, and here we are going to put our SQL query. So what Java will do is it will read that SQL query and then it will add it to the batch. So that remember we are making a whole batch of all the statements that we want to have. And then later on, we're going to execute all the statements in the batch. So that means send them all out to the database. So now we are adding the SQL statement into the batch and later on we will send them all to the database. So here we are going to write our SQL statement. So write this down, update bank account. So this is saying update the bank account table and you want to set the checking balance to checking balance minus amount where ID is assigned ID. Okay, and now what I want you guys to do is I want you to put this in here and then put that in there so that we actually call the variable and then put this in here. Put, give me a plus there. Let's tidy this up a bit. The reason I put a mount in there before is so that you guys can see it. Okay, so I'm going to explain exactly what this is doing. This is saying we want to make an update to the bank account table. We want to set the checking balance, which is currently $500. We want to set it to the current checking balance minus whatever the amount is that they want to take out. So say they want to take out $100. What SQL will do is it will say, okay, 500 minus 100 is 400 and assign it to the checking balance. So that's a way how you can keep decreasing the amount of something within a um, table. And then you say you want to do this where the ID is whatever the ID is that we sent here. So that is one, okay? So we are going to send $100 here and it should take out $100 and assign it to here, okay? So then what I want you guys to do is I want you to highlight this which is the statement batch that we just added in and I want you to paste it down here. And we have to make sure that we throw an SQL exception because this is a different method and it will throw it back to the main method. So the differences we are going to do here is we need to change this to saving balance. Now we are talking about the saving balance column. Make this saving balance. So now we are saying update the bank account um, table set saving balance to the saving balance 
plus the amount where ID is assigned ID. The reason we did a plus is because this is saying deposit into savings. So this will take the hundred dollars that we put in and it will put a hundred dollars in. It will add it to the previous amount and then it will assign it to here. So if they put in a hundred dollars, it'll go 500 plus 100, 600 and assign it to the saving balance. So it, that's pretty cool how that works out. And now the last thing that we need to do now that we have added two batches is we need to execute the batches. So you come up here and give me two enters after your withdraw and your deposit methods and just type in statement ment dot execute batch. And what this will do is it will take all the batches that we've made. So if we had a hundred batches in here, it will get them all together and then we'll send them all to the database together. This is sending one batch update. It's pretty cool. So after this, let's, um, why am I getting a squiggly here? Mm, statement dot. Well, after this, let's go system dot out dot print ln and let's type in account modified. And this, uh, give me a second, guys. I'm not really sure why. Public static void main. Um, null pointer access. The variable can only be null at this location. Oh, I know what the problem is. We are we are utilizing a statement that hasn't been um, created. Um, remember, after we created our connection, what we were supposed to do is add this statement. Statement is assigned connection dot create statement. My bad. So what it was doing was it was saying, hey, I can't execute the batch because statement is currently null. So now we have created our statement and now we can execute it. Sorry about that. So um, now what this should do is it should um, take both of the statements that we wrote it should put them in a batch and then it will go back up to the um, main method and it will execute that batch and if it worked it will say account modified and let's put in a couple happies so if we run this we see account modified so if we come into our account currently what it was before is there was five hundred dollars in checking and there was five hundred dollars in saving but if we click go now there's four hundred dollars in saving and checking and there's six hundred dollars in saving so it was able to do both statements just with a statement dot execute batch so as you can see this could be very very useful if you want to insert a whole bunch of information into a database at once or you want to update a whole bunch of information to the database and you could just call this method as many times for whatever you want to put in there and it will do all the batches at once so what we are going to do in the next tutorial is you can see, maybe you might notice that there is a little bit of a problem with what we just did. And the way we can solve that problem is this thing called transactions. And the problem is we're dealing with money, first of all. And as you can see, we just said that we want to send all that information to the database all at once. But if you can think about this, what would happen if the user withdrew $100 from their checking account and then before we got here something happened and an SQL exception was thrown and for some reason the money did not deposit back into their savings account so our ATM would have effectively taken out $100 and then the next $100 that they should have put in their deposit would just be lost in cyberspace so in the next tutorial, we are going to learn this thing called transactions, which will let us use this batch update. But what that will do is it will say, hey, if the whole, um, if the whole batch does not work, we're not going to execute any of it. But if the whole batch does work, then we will execute it. So stay tuned for the next tutorial because we are going to learn how to make these batch updates even better. So I'm sorry this tutorial was kind of long. I know you guys probably just want to zoom through this stuff, but I hope you're actually learning why we are utilizing this stuff so that when you do any kind of program that you want to do on your own, you can say, okay, here I need to use a connection statement, insert into, prepared statement, batch update, transactions. You will know what to do when you read the problem. And that is the most important part. Not
not just teaching you the syntax. So um, thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful. If you have a question, comment below and let me know. And thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next tutorial about transactions.